How often have we heard that there is a consensus in the scientific community about global warming? We hear a 97% figure, and then we hear lots of counterclaims that there is no such thing as a consensus on this issue. This video will take a look at what consensus means in terms of science and whether one exists on global warming. The scientific method is generally poorly understood outside the scientific community. Let me just here make a brief description of the scientific method. Generally when you want to research a particular issue, you start with a question. In order to take a look at that question, the first thing you do is to research all the related issues, what other people have published on it, what the general scientific principles involved are, what the equations look like. Based on that, you come up with an idea. That's called a hypothesis in science. Based on that hypothesis, you develop an experiment to test it. Now this experiment can be more observations, it can be something done in the lab, or it could be a model using those scientific principles that you've already established. The results from that experiment are then analyzed. You take that analysis and you draw conclusions from that analysis. You then gather together the question, the previous research, your hypothesis, details of the experiment, details of the analysis, and your conclusions and you write them in a scientific paper which you put in a journal. That will often lead to a theory. A theory is a hypothesis backed with observations or models. Lots of other scientists will read what you've done and may come up with alternative theories. So what do you do now? Well you go back through this loop. Those theories raise further questions, further research and new ideas. And what you try to do is devise experiments that will differentiate between these various theories. You go around this loop enough times that you eliminate all but one of the theories. That's when you reach consensus. Now let's take a look at this in the context of global warming. So, for example, your question could be, what is causing the Earth to warm? You would then research the Earth's atmosphere, the solar output, changes in the Earth's orbit, changes in the Earth's albedo, and any other factors that you think are appropriate. And say the concept you come up with is it that is basically man-made. So then you would devise a number of experiments to test that. For example, you might take a lot of different observations at different wavelengths over a long period to see how and why the Earth is warming. You would then do a statistical analysis of that data, and maybe you would conclude that some of the possibilities that you looked at back in stage two can be eliminated. You would then publish those uh, results in papers in refereed journals. Say you'd eliminate everything but three theories, the sun, greenhouse gases, and cosmic rays. So now you go back through this loop several times, looking at each one of those individually, devising experiments to differentiate between them, or taking observations to differentiate between them, or building models to differentiate between them. And when you've gone round enough times, as we have done in, in climatology, you can eliminate some of those possibilities. In fact, you can eliminate all but greenhouse gases. But then you also find that they're not quite right just by themselves. And the consensus opinion comes in that it's greenhouse gases and aerosols combined that create the global warming that has been observed. You've now reached consensus. A second scientific principle that we should look at is that no scientific theory can be proven. Thus, consensus is not reached by a vote. It is achieved when there are no more viable alternative theories left standing, and we can find no fundamental observations that contradict the theory. But the reason why a scientific theory cannot be proven is there's always a possibility that a better theory will come along which will explain the data better than the current theory. A prime example of this is Newton's law of gravitation where for 250 years it was used very successfully to predict the motion of the planets but there was one fly in the ointment a tiny discrepancy in the orbit of mercury now for a time we postulated that there was another planet somewhere nearby mercury that was perturbing its orbit but that never panned out it wasn't until einstein came along with his theory of general relativity that indicated that objects moving in a strong gravitational field or very fast would not quite obey Newton's laws. Now that doesn't mean that Newton's laws were incorrect, they just weren't complete, and Einstein completed them. 
Now there's a possibility that Einstein's rules are not quite complete either and somebody will come along subsequently and change them. Consensus does not require unanimous approval. There will always be some stick in the muds that stick to the old theories or upset that their particular idea was not accepted. It does not require the acceptance of those who are not qualified to judge, either the data, the analysis or the scientific principles involved. It does not require the approval of the media either. And where you see a discrepancy between the scientific experts and the media, it generally means the media are misinformed. Consensus is reached when the scientific evidence is overwhelming. Here are 15 reasons why one would believe the Earth is warming. Now if you look at them, only 5 of them involve the use of thermometers. And you can nitpick the details of any one of these and say that that disproves global warming. However, when you take them in their entirety, the evidence here is overwhelming. We often hear that 97% of climate scientists agree with the anthropogenic global warming theory. Where does this number come from? It comes from three different studies. One was done in 2004 that looked at the results from 924 climate papers and found that all of them agreed with the anthropogenic global warming theory and none of them provided any observations that disagreed with that theory. Another study in 2009 have found that 97% of climate scientists agreed that the Earth was warming and it was largely human caused. The most comprehensive study was done by Cook in 2013 which found 97% of 10,000 papers agreed with the anthropogenic global warming theory. It wasn't just that, 97% agreed, 2% weren't sure and only 1% disagreed. So this 97% figure is not a measure of a vote but a measure of how comprehensive and how overwhelming the evidence for anthropogenic global warming is. It is about at this stage that the detractors of the anthropogenic global warming theory bring up the Oregon Petition, or as it is now known, the Petition Project. This is where 31,487 scientists signed a petition denying that global warming is happening. However, when you look at the percentage of eligible scientists to sign this petition, that represents 0.03%. They claim that 9,029 of them had PhDs which represents 0.05% of the eligible PhDs in the country. And they claim a whole 39 climate scientists signed that, which would represent about 0.02% of the climate scientists. However, there are a few little problems with the petition project. This is a copy of the form you had to fill out. If you actually read the petition itself, it doesn't actually say the planet isn't warming. It says merely that it won't be catastrophically warming, and catastrophically is not defined. Also, the qualifications of the signatories are done on an honour basis. You can fill in any box you like. And there are no checks on ID, field of study or speciality. This is shown by the fact there were a lot of bogus names in the list of signers. There were cartoon characters, film stars and a lot of dead people. In fact, a colleague of mine at the University of Maryland, much to his great annoyance, found his name was on the list. He suspected that some of his graduate students had signed him up, but all attempts to try to get them to take his name off the list were rejected. His name is still there. I checked. This petition has been debunked by so many people in so many different ways, it's hardly worth flogging a dead horse. But let's go over a couple of the main problems with it. First of all, there was the problem with the National Academy of Sciences. The petition when it was sent out to a scientist was accompanied by a paper that purportedly came from the National Academy of Sciences publications. It didn't. It was a fake. And the National Academy went so far as to publicly denounce that particular publication as not only not being one of their publications, but has never been published anywhere else. Scientific American contacted a sample of the signatories and only 30% of them still agreed with the petition. New scientists concluded that the accompanying paper was quote, patent crap, which is actually a rather extreme thing for a scientific journal to be saying. And if you wanted comprehensive debunking of the petition project, please see my video, 31,000 scientists can't all be wrong, can they? Now, the main point here is they wouldn't have to go to such extreme lengths of deception to support their case if they had actually a good scientific case. Apparently, they don't. The next time you hear somebody decrying 
the 97% number, remind them that it is not a vote, it is consensus built on the fact that the data is overwhelming. And please post a link to this video. Remember, almost all scientists agree that it is time to act on global warming.